Good evening and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Pub Quizzle HQ with me, Ali B, your host for this evening. Well, I'm very happy to be here with you tonight. Thank you for having me for an evening of quizzing fun. We should be here for about 90 minutes of quizzing tonight. So I hope you are all ready with a pen and paper, a drink, maybe some nibbles. And so what's the format of tonight going to be? So if you want to play in a team together in your household, that works well. If you want to play against one another, competitive spirit, no problem there. Maybe you want to challenge your neighbours or your friends and connect on another uh, technology via WhatsApp or something like that and play over the over the miles. Perhaps you want to play with your colleagues and create a virtual leaderboard for the office. And hey, if you're playing solo, that works too. You can rely on yourself. No worries at all. So what are we going to be doing tonight? Well, it's it's pure quizzing tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to have six rounds of 15 questions. So that's 15 ultimate quizzing here. And after the third round, there will be a little bit of a break. So you can have uh, a bit of a drink stop, fill your glasses, grab some more nibbles, whatever you want to do. Uh, and then we will review the answers for the first half of the quiz. Then we'll jump into the second half. So rounds four to six. And then we'll have the final answers. Uh, so you can tot up your total. Now, uh, let's have a little look at what these um, rounds are going to look like this evening for you. So the six rounds are going to be TV and cinema, then on to science and nature, then on to famous voices. So that's going to be your audio round this evening. Then, as I say, we'll have a little bit of a break check your answers, review them, make sure you're happy before we, we check them through and you can check your score uh, at the halfway point. Then on to potluck. So potluck is just random trivia, my favourite round, of course. Round five, art and literature, and then we will finish on a high with a picture round. Now, six rounds, 15 questions. If my maths is correct, that makes 90 points. However, there is a little twist in the tail for you all this evening. So you will each have, whether you're playing as a team, your team will have, or you solo, one joker that you can play during the quiz tonight. So what does the joker do? You must decide on the round you want to play your joker and play it at the start. And that will mean that you will double your points in that round. So tactical play here. Have a look at the round titles. What is your specialist subject? What is going to be your strategic move today? I will remind you at the beginning of each round about playing your joker. So don't worry a bit about that. I'll, I'll make sure that you don't forget. But just have a look at the round titles now. As you can see, nice big range of topics. We're going to have a range of questions tonight. So whether you're a quizzing beginner, a quizzing aficionado or somewhere in the middle, there will be something for you tonight. I promise. OK, so I just wanted to say as well, I have run a few of these uh, quizzes uh, around the world in different time zones. Tonight, as we are UK time zone, I have donned my Union Jack bow tie for you all, especially for you. The pig is keen as well. And the, the total score with your bonus, with your bonus points for the Joker is 105. Last week, the highest score we had was 79, which came out of the United Arab, Arab Emirates. So that is your target to be. Now, I, uh, I'm not I'm not with you tonight, so I can't give you a prize. My prize of choice would normally be a bottle of bubbles, as many of you would know. However, you will win the honour of doing exceedingly well in the pub quiz uh, with me tonight. So, of course, that's always a winner. And hey, those quizzing bragging rights aren't easily come by. So enough from me. Let's get cracking. A good game. A fast game's a good game. Let's get on to round one. So round one is going to be TV and cinema. As promised, I remind you, do you want to play your joker for this round? So declare now. Of course, you have to declare at the start of the round, not the end of the round, depending on how you've done. So declare now. If you have decided to be bold and play your joker at the start of round one, put a big J next to round one, maybe a star. If you're feeling arty, draw a little joker's hat, whatever works for you. Numbers one to 15 on a page 
And here we go with question one. Which Nicole was once Mrs. Tom Cruise? So which Nicole was once Mrs. Tom Cruise? Hollywood royalty there. Okay, question number two. What were PJ and Duncan, aka Ant and Deck, doing in Biker Grove when PJ was blinded? What were PJ and Duncan doing in Biker Grove when PJ was blinded? Big children's TV show when I was young, absolute fave. Question number three. In the film, if the tiger was crouching, what was the dragon? Bit cryptic, but if the tiger was crouching, what was the dragon? Question number four. Which comedy has episode titles starting with The One? So which comedy has episode titles starting with The One? Question number five. In Toy Story, what was the name of the piggy bank? What was the name of the piggy bank in Toy Story? This guy knows. Any Pixar fans out there? Okay, question number six. Which classic film starred Clark Gable, Vivian Lee, and Leslie Howard? Which classic film starred Clark Gable, Vivian Lee, and Leslie Howard. Question number seven. In which country is the winter version of UK's Love Island filmed? Okay, any Love Island fans out there? We are now treated to two, two versions of Love Island. Okay, question number eight. What was the name of Will Smith's male cousin in The French Prince, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? He did have two female cousins, but I want the name of the male cousin of Will Smith in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Question number nine. On the chat show, at which number do the Kumars live? So on the chat show, at which number do the Kumars live? Remember that TV chat show? What was the number of their house? And question number 10. What was the name of the motel? in Psycho. What was the name of the motel in Psycho? If we've got any horror, horror film fans out there. What was the name of the motel? Okay, now like I say, this is ultimate quizzing, so we do have 15 questions. I'm just going to leave that screen up just for a little bit. If you want to just note down any of the questions that perhaps you need to think about for a little bit longer, just jot them down because we won't be coming back to this screen again. We're going to move on to our final five questions for round one. Okie doke. So, question 11. Who played the voice of the dragon in Disney's Mulan? Who played the voice of the dragon in Disney's Mulan? Any Disney fans? As many of you know, I'm a big Disney fan, so here's the nod to Disney in the TV and cinema round. Question number 12. What was the name of Eddie's daughter in Absolutely Fabulous? 
What was the name of Eddie's daughter in Absolutely Fabulous? Classic UK TV. What was her daughter called? Question number 13. In the Magic Roundabout, what type of animal was Brian? In the Magic Roundabout, what type of animal was Brian? Not sure if we've got any Magic Roundabout fans out there. Brian. Okay, question number 14. On which TV quiz show were Mark Lamar and Ulrika Johnson team captains? So on which TV quiz show were Mark Lamar and Ulrika Johnson team captains? And finally, we are at the end of the first round already. So question 15, which film had the advertising tagline? This is Benjamin. He's a little worried about his future. So on those film posters, which film had the advertising tagline? This is Benjamin. He's a little worried about his future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your TV and cinema round complete already. Were those jokers well played? Have you made the right strategic move with your joker play there? I hope so. For those of you that didn't, I hope that future plays will reap the rewards. OK, just a couple more minutes just for you to finish off your answers for round one. Get your paper ready for round two, which is going to be. Our round is complete now. Round two is science and nature. So again, reminder. Do you want to play your joker? Is this the round for you to double your points? Were you a bit of a science geek at school? Are you a science geek at school still? All right, on to science and nature with question one. In the human body, what is the common name for the clavicle? In the human body, what is the common name for the clavicle? Alrighty, question number two. What colour is the live wire in an electric plug? What colour is the live wire in an electric plug? Have you been doing any DIYing in the past week or so? Important to get this one right. Question number three. What type of fish was Nemo in the Disney film Finding Nemo? What type of fish was Nemo in the Disney film Finding Nemo? Okay, question four. What is the green substance in leaves that allows plants to photosynthesize? What is the green substance in leaves that allows plants to photosynthesize? Back to GCSE biology or earlier. All right, question five. Which chemical element has the symbol SN? Which chemical element has the symbol SN? Now to chemistry, GCSE, or earlier. All right, question six. Which planet is furthest from the sun? Which planet is furthest from the sun? Do you remember the mnemonic? And yes, I did just use the word mnemonic. All right, question number seven. Which scientist and Nobel Prize winner 
discovered the elements radium and polonium. Which scientist and Nobel Prize winner discovered the elements radium and polonium? All right, question number eight. The absence of which vitamin causes the condition rickets? The absence of which vitamin causes the condition rickets? Question number nine. Which animal lives in an apiary? Which animal lives in an apiary? And question number 10, the last one on screen here. Not last one in the round, though. Which nutty ingredient can be found in dynamite? Got some choices here. Is that A, peanut, B, almond, C, walnut. So which nutty ingredient can be found in dynamite? Is that A, peanut, B, walnut, no, B, almond, C, walnut. As it says on screen, ignore what I said. A, peanut, B, almond, C, walnut. All right, again, just give you a few moments just to Note down any questions that you maybe think it's in the back of my mind somewhere. I just need a little bit more time to get it on your pieces of paper because we're going to move on to our final five questions for round two. Okie doke, question 11. What did Dmitri Mendeleev invent? What did Dmitri Mendeleev invent? Now, I think this is one of those uh, you either know it or you don't kind of questions. Pretty tough to guess this one. But uh, do you know what he invented in the arena of science and nature? Question 12. What was the name of Doc's dog in Back to the Future? The purist may say this is still a TV and cinema question. I disagree. This is very much a science and nature question. What was the name of Doc's dog in Back to the Future? Again, one that you might be able to guess. Question 13. If you suffer from diabetes, which hormone are you lacking? If you suffer from diabetes, which hormone are you lacking? Question number 14. What is the largest artery in the human body? What is the largest artery in the human body? And question 15. Which psychologist developed the theory of the Oedipus complex? Which psychologist developed the theory of the Oedipus complex? And there we are already at the end of round two. So I'll just give you a few moments there with the questions still on screen just to capture any of your final answers. And ladies and gentlemen, that is round two complete. So we now move to the final round of the first half, which is our famous voices round. So this is an audio round. I'm going to explain to you uh, what you need to do. So you're going to hear 15 clips of famous people. Now they will come from all areas so not just not just film and tv sport journalism 
all sorts of different different things. And what I need you to do is just say who is speaking. So who is it that is speaking? Some of the voices will be particularly distinctive. Some of them may be a little more difficult. Okay, so let me just get ready with our first famous voices clip. Okay, and we have question one, who am I? No, we weren't very angry. Um, we, we, I mean, we agreed with the whole ethos of it, but we just did the same act we were doing at college, really, which was laughing at the word muesli. And... <laughs> Okay, that was question one. Realised I didn't confirm with you if you wanted to play your joker for that round. So you had a bit of a cheeky, a cheeky sneak peek at the first question there. But if you want to play your your joker for this round, then let's go. I will will just confirm. I'll play everything through once, and then I will play them again. So if you missed it the first time, I will play them again. Just turning up the volume for you all a little bit there as well. Question two. Don't, I think you can only, you can say this, I'm, only, I'm not doing it for the money, if you've got money already. But it, that's not something you can say. I mean, put, put aside the book which you're doing for charity. But that's not something you can say if you haven't got any money. You've got it. Okay. Who was that? Question two. Question number three. Um, the, the day after, I literally was like questioning myself whether I'd made the right decision. And then every time, even now, you know, every time that I go to a big sporting event or watch England play, you know, I, I loved playing for all the clubs that I played with over the years. But the one thing that I miss more than anything is playing, playing for England. It's so that was clip number three. Number four. Who is this? Now, he has publicly said many times that during rehearsal, he came to me with questions, suggestions about how we should play a sword fight scene that could be extended with some extra stabbing and wounding. Okay. I hope the volume is all right for everyone. I've now put it up just to max, just to confirm. Sorry if people have been turning their uh, their own volumes up and therefore now are being <laughs> blasted. Clip number five. Now, this year's nominees for best performance by an actress in a supporting role. Okay, that was number five. Clip number six. I owe Mr. De Niro a lot, probably a lot more than most people. Uh, he was very, very generous, and, and I was really, I mean, it was on Goodfellas, which we'll be seeing shortly. I was uh, stabbing Frank Vincent in the trunk. Okay. That was number six. Who is number seven? I think you're better located here, Michael. It's a slightly nicer area. You're less likely to be mugged on your way to the screen around here. And girls, forgive me if I don't perch on my seat. Okay. Question number eight. It's all about trying to just help people, give them ideas for things that can improve uh, mental health or your fitness or your diet and not just the kind of typical things we all hear like eat five a day or... That was number eight. Moving to question number nine. Who are you hearing here? It's, it's my job to give 100% and, and I feel like you know, I've been allowed to do what I love for so long. I love my job, so the least I can do is give my all. Who is that? Question number 10. 
the runway when we landed, and we landed literally is just the main road, and the farmer is just yeah. getting rid of the sheep out of the way. Because it's famous for the sheep, and it's got the oldest, the longest sheep dike in the world. And the sheep were the other side of the wall, so they're bred purely on what, seaweed and, and that kind of stuff. And the, the meat is just incredible. So, Who was number 10? Who was number 10? Question number 11. Because you're getting fat or maybe it's been raining too much. You're just sad, that's all. The mean woods are horrible. Suddenly you're afraid and you don't know what you're afraid of. Who was number 11? Clip number 12. Um, put aside my emotional um, part of it. Uh, and pride, I definitely have pride. Some embarrassment, of course. <laughs> But I, I do hope that it takes the audience on, on a journey as well because it marks so many. I mean, it's 31 years worth there, so. So he was talking about 31 years in their particular business there. Question 13, clip 13, who is this? I have to, I have to talk to you about something. Now, I, I, I'm sure many of you have heard. Uh, I've recently been the victim of a scandal in the media and there's been some very very serious allegations made against me and I just want I, I want to get ahead of everything and address those rumors and assure you my audience that these accusations are not true so that was number 13 number 14 your penultimate clip I was a little surprised because, you know, I had a letter saying that he might come and greet me. But actually, I think it's probably a very good idea. Um, things in the jungle are so intense. Your emotions are really raw. And I really now want to just relax, see to my kids who are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. So he was talking about their time in the jungle there. And finally, this is your last clip for the Famous Voices Round. I've now acquired that through my wife. It was uh, one of our wedding anniversaries a few months ago. And uh, she, uh, my idol when I was a kid was Little Richard. And she knew that, so she found one of his old original stage jackets, 1956, and she got it for me for the anniversary present. And, and that is your final clip. So that's the round complete. Now, I will go back through them because I imagine there were a couple there that you thought, oh, you know what, I recognise that voice, but who is it? That is the question. Who is it? So let's just go quickly through from the top. So this is clip number one. Let me just get back to clip number one for you. Just keep thinking and having a chat just while I get them back up for you. Here we go. No, we weren't very angry. Um, we, we, I mean, we agreed with the whole ethos of it, but we just did the same act we were doing at college, really, which was laughing at the word muesli. And <laughs> that was number one. Number two. Don't. I think you can only you can say this. I'm only. I'm not doing it for the money. If you've got money already. But it, that's not something you can say. I mean, put, put aside the book, which you're doing for charity. But that's not something you can say if you haven't got any money. You've got it. Number three. Um, the, the day after, I literally was, like, questioning myself whether I'd made the right decision. And then every time, even now, you know, every time that I go to a big sporting event or watch England play, you know, I, I loved playing for all the clubs that I played with over the years. But the one thing that I miss more than anything is playing, playing for England. It's that was number three. Number four. Now, he has publicly said many times that during rehearsal, he came to me with questions, suggestions about how we should play a sword fight scene that could be extended with some extra stabbing and wounding. That was number four. Number five. Now, this year's nominees for best performance by an actress in a supporting role. 
Number six. I owe Mr. De Niro a lot, probably a lot more than most people. Uh, he was very, very generous, and, and I was really, I mean, it was on Goodfellas, which we'll be seeing shortly. I was uh, stabbing Frank Vincent in the trunk. Sometimes a bit of a clue in what they're saying, eh? Number seven. I think you're better located here, Michael. It's a slightly nicer area. You're less likely to be mugged. And girls, forgive me if I don't perch on my seat. Okay, question eight. It's all about trying to just help people, give them ideas for things that can improve uh, mental health or your fitness or your diet. And not just the kind of typical things we all hear, like eat five a day or... Almost there. Number nine. It's, it's my job to give 100%. And, and I feel like, you know, I've been allowed to do what I love for so long. I love my job. So the least I can do is give my all. Number 10. Uh, the runway when we landed, and we landed literally is just the main road, and the farmer is just yeah. getting rid of the sheep out of the way. Because it's famous for the sheep, and it's got the oldest, longest sheep dike in the world. And the sheep were the other side of the wall, so they're bred purely on what, seaweed and, and that kind of stuff. And the, the meat is just incredible. So Number 11. No. Loser, because you're getting fat, and maybe it's been raining too long. You're just sad, that's all. I mean, that's a horrible. Suddenly you're afraid and you don't know what you're afraid of. Number 12. Um, put aside my emotional um, part of it uh, and pride. I definitely have pride. Some embarrassment, of course. But I, I do hope that it takes the audience on, on a journey as well because it marks so many. I mean, it's 31 years worth there. So. Number 13. I have, to, I have to talk to you about something. Now, I, I, I'm sure many of you have heard. Uh, I've recently been the victim of a scandal in the media, and there's been some very, very serious allegations made against me. And I just want, I, I want to get ahead of everything and address those rumours and assure you, my audience, that these accusations are not true. Number 14... I was a little surprised because, you know, I had a letter saying that he might come and greet me. But actually, I think it's probably a very good idea. Um, things in the jungle are so intense. Your emotions are really raw. And I really now want to just relax, see to my kids who are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. And finally, your last clip on the Who Am I round. I've now acquired that through my wife it was uh, one of our wedding anniversaries a few months ago and uh, she uh, my idol when i was a kid was little richard and she knew that so she found one of his old original stage jackets 1956 and she got it for me for the anniversary present and okay ladies and gentlemen that is round three finished so we will now be taking, as promised, a five minute break and then we will come back to check your answers for the first half. There will be a timer up on screen. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, you will be you will know when we're going to come back and the answers are going to be on screen as well. So if you miss the first couple while you're topping up your glass, popping to the loo, whatever, no problem whatsoever because the answer will be on screen. Thank you very much for your uh, quizzing attention during the first round and I will see you very soon.
Sorry, I'm on. Caught me just uh, bopping away there to a little bit of lounge music. So I hope everyone has had a nice short break. Tops of their glass, I've got a little bit more wine here. Uh, and uh, I hope we are ready for our answers to the first three rounds. Everyone ready? Pens at the ready. I hope uh, everyone is feeling comfortable with their joker play. Let's see how we go with the answers for the first half of the quiz. So, round one. Question one in the TV and cinema was, which Nicole was once Mrs. Tom Cruise? And that was, of course, Nicole Kidman. It was, of course, Nicole Kidman. Second question. What were PJ and Duncan doing when PJ was blinded in Biker Grove? They were paintballing. Absolutely ruined that activity for an entire generation of kids, myself included. I have never, ever been paintballing. Okay, question number three. In the film, if the tiger was crouching, what was the dragon doing? The dragon was hidden, and that is hidden, not hiding. So... We'll play stricties on that. Hidden dragon. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Number four. Which comedy has episode titles starting with the one? Of course, that is Friends. The beast that was Friends. Okay, in Toy Story, what was the name of the piggy bank? Ham. He is making a little bit of a cameo appearance. But that was Ham. Question number six. Which classic film starred Clark Gable, Vivian Lee, and Leslie Howard? That was Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Question seven. What country is the winter version of Love Island films? South Africa. Summer version on Mallorca. Winter version in South Africa. Question eight. The name of Will Smith's male cousin in The Fresh Prince is Carlton. If you can do the dance. Number nine. What number did the Kumars live at? They lived at number 42. Number 42. Question 10, what was the name of the motel in Psycho? That was the Bates Motel. The Bates Motel. Question 11, who played the voice of the dragon in Disney's Mulan? It was Eddie Murphy, as well as doing the donkey in Shrek. He was also Mulan's dragon. Number 12, the name of Eddie's daughter in Absolutely Fabulous is Safi or Saffron, if we are going to use her full name. Number 13, which film ends with the famous line, I feel I may have missed this question when we when we actually uh, did it earlier. So sorry about that. Which film ends with the famous line, nobody's perfect? I, I've actually changed the question. Sorry on my notes here. The question was in the magic roundabout, what's the name of the snail? And that was Brian. Brian was the snail. Sorry about that. And question 14, which TV quiz show were Mark Lamar and Ulrika Johnson, the captains that were shooting stars? Question 15, which film had the advertising tagline, this is Benjamin, he's a little worried about his future, The Graduate. That was The Graduate. Okay, moving on to science and nature. In the human body, what is the common name for the clavicle? That's the collarbone. That is the collarbone. Question two, what colour is the live wire in an electric plug? That is brown. That is brown, as I said, important to get those colours right. Number three, what type of fish was Nemo in uh, Disney's Finding Nemo? He was a clownfish. He was a clownfish. Number four, the green substance in leaves that allows plants to photosynthesize is chlorophyll. That is chlorophyll. Number five, which chemical element has the symbol SN? That is tin. The planet that's furthest from the sun the answer here is Neptune. If anyone put Pluto, I'm afraid that is incorrect. Neptune was declassified and is no longer a planet. Question seven. Which scientist and Nobel Prize winner discovered the elements radium and polonium? That was Marie Curie. Marie Curie. The absence of which vitamin causes the condition rickets? That's vitamin D. Vitamin D. Number nine. Which animal lives in an apiary? It's a bee. Very important to us all, a bee. Number 10, the nutty ingredient found in dynamite. It is A, the peanut. I thought that was a really interesting bit of trivia. There's the peanut. Number 11, what did Dimitri Mendeleev invent? 
the periodic table. He invented the periodic table. Number 12, what was the name of Doc's dog in Back to the Future? It was Einstein the dog. Einstein the dog. Number 13, if you suffer from diabetes, you are lacking insulin. You are lacking insulin. The largest artery in the human body is the aorta. And number 15, the psychologist that developed the theory of the Oedipus complex is, of course, Sigmund Freud. Okay, round number three, the famous voices. I'm sure some of these were easier than others, some of them on the tip of the tongue, perhaps some of them just not ringing any bells at all. But number one was Jennifer Saunders. Number one was Jennifer Saunders. Uh, appearing in another question earlier uh, about Absolutely Fabulous when we talked about Eddie's daughter. Number two was Terry Wogan. Number three was David Beckham. A little bit of a clue in what you were saying there. Number four, Morgan Freeman, the man to narrate everybody's lives. Number five, that was Sean Connery. And I promise it wasn't someone doing an impression of Sean Connery. That's actually what he sounds like. Number six, Joe Pesci. Now, he talks about uh, uh, working um, in, was it Goodfellas there? But I remember him as the little burglar in Home Alone. Number seven, Edna Everidge. Or if you put Barry Humphreys, that's acceptable for a point as well. Number eight was Steph McGovern. Steph McGovern. So she uh, is has now moved to Channel 4 from BBC. Number nine, Beyonce. Number nine was Beyonce. Number Hepburn. Number 12 was Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue talking about her 31 years in the pop business. Number, uh, number 13 was James Corden. Now, the scandal he was talking about in his little clip was actually he had been accused of not actually driving in his uh, carpool karaoke. So that was the scandal he was talking about there. Number 14, Keris Matthews of Catatonia fame for all our Welsh friends out there tonight. And finally, number 15, a bit of a toughie this one, although some of you, I think, found them all a bit tough. Number 15 was David Bowie. Alrighty, so that was the first half. Hope you've done okay. Tot up your total, see where you've come. And we will move to our second half and round four. That is going to be pot luck. So would anyone like to play their joker here? As I say, bit of a fave because it's just loads of random facts, which those of you who know me know that I love. Alrighty, question one, is everyone ready with their pen and paper? Numbers one to 15. Question one is, which UK TV show is known in Argentina as Bailando por un sueño? So, which TV show is known in Argentina as Bailando por un sueño? And I just put that in there because I just wanted to say the Spanish, obviously. Uh, but Back to your Spanish classes, do you, can you translate and can you work out what UK TV show that is? Alrighty, question number two. Which superhero had his own Lego movie? Now, come on, kids, this is where you can come into your own. Which superhero has his own Lego movie? Number three, which machine, uh, sorry, which company's tagline is the ultimate driving machine? Which company's tagline is the ultimate driving machine? Okay, question number four. What's the collective noun for a group of crows? What is the collective noun for a group of crows? Love a collective noun? No, there's a few of you out there that also enjoy a collective noun. Alrighty, number five. What was Britney Spears' first UK number one? What was Britney Spears' first UK number one?
Number six, where does Paddington Bear come from? Where does Paddington Bear come from? Number seven. What was the name of the model village in South Birmingham created to house Cadbury's employees? What was the name of the model village in South Birmingham created to house Cadbury employees? Now, I'm not sure if any of you know where I'm from. I rarely talk about it. Of course, a little nod to my hometown there. Question number eight. What does the Latin phrase cave canem mean? What does the Latin phrase cave canem mean? We often use the expression carpe diem. After tonight, you can wow your friends with this expression. Okay. Question number nine. Who is Barbara? Millicent Roberts, better known as? Who is Barbara Millicent Roberts, better known as? Another trivia fact favourite of mine, this one. Number 10. How many points is the letter X worth in Scrabble? How many points is the letter X worth in Scrabble? All right, I will just leave those up again for a little bit. Just so you can have a quick check back. Note anything you want to ponder over for the rest of the half. Okay. Question 11. What does an arctophile collect? What does an arctophile collect? Bit of a toughie, but again, worth a guess. Worth a guess, I reckon, this one. Number 12. Which version of Microsoft Windows introduced the start button? Which version of Microsoft Windows introduced the start button? If you can remember way back then, when did the start button get introduced? Number 13. When chatting online, what does the acronym IRL stand for? When chatting online, what does the acronym IRL stand for? Question number 14. How many standard bottles of champagne fit into a Jeroboam? How many standard bottles of champagne fit into a Jeroboam. Question number 15. Which pop group's members were called T-Boz, Chili and Left Eye? Which pop group's members were called T-Boz, Chili and Left Eye? All right, and that is the end of the potluck round. How did everyone do? Love the random facts. I'm all about the random facts. Okay, that is the round complete. We are moving on to our penultimate round now, which is art and literature. Putting this in as penultimate so as to not scare you off early around, but do not worry, this is Ali B, so it's not going to be too highbrow. A mix of questions, I hope. All right, anybody want to play their Joker? Have you been storing it up tactically to play right about now? Okay, 
So let's get cracking with number one. Who wrote A Tale of Two Cities? Who wrote A Tale of Two Cities? Number two. In which museum is the Mona Lisa currently exhibited? In which museum is the Mona Lisa currently exhibited? Question number three. Which novel do these characters appear in? Fagin, Mr. Bumble and Nancy. Which novel do these characters appear in? Fagin, Mr. Bumble and Nancy. Question number four. What is the popular name of the painting called Der Schrei der Natur? in the original German. What is the popular name of the painting called Der Schrei der Natur in the original German? Number five. In Bridget Jones's diary, what is the name of her boss and major love interest? In Bridget Jones's diary, what is the name of her boss and major love interest? And of course, appearing in the art and literature round because it was a book before the Renee Zellweger films. Fave book was the second one. Question number two. In The Owl and the Pussycat, what did they wrap their honey and plenty of money in? So in the poem, The Owl and the Pussycat, what did they wrap their honey and plenty of money in? Great poem. Number seven. How old was Adrian Mole in his first diary? How old was Adrian Mole in his first diary? Question number eight. Complete the Shakespeare play. Two gentlemen of where? Complete the Shakespeare play. Two gentlemen of where? Question number nine. In the Mr. Men, what colour is Mr. Strong? In the Mr. Men, what colour is Mr. Strong? Question number 10. Whose artwork was shredded after selling at Sotheby's in 2018? So whose artwork was shredded after selling in Sotheby's in 2018? All right, as before, I will just leave those up for a little bit, just so you can make sure you've got everything captured. I think I may have misnumbered during that, so the Owl of the Pussycat is number six, uh, in case anyone was confused there. <laughs> I'm sure you're not, it's just me that's confused. Okay, moving on to question 11. In Alice in Wonderland, who is angered by the playing cards painting the roses red? In Alice in Wonderland, who's angered by the playing cards painting the roses red? Question number 12. The second novel, whose second novel 
published in 2002, was called The Autograph Man, whose second novel, published in 2002, was called The Autograph Man. Question number 13. What was the name of the merchant in The Merchant of Venice? What was the name of the merchant in The Merchant of Venice? Couldn't do a literature round without having another awesome Midlander Shakespeare in there twice. Number 14. The 1995 film Clueless is loosely based on which Jane Austen novel? The 1995 film Clueless is loosely based on which Jane Austen novel? And finally, for your art and literature round, which year did Van Gogh cut off? Which year did Van Gogh cut off? Worth a guess on that one, I reckon. Okay, so that is the end of your art and literature round. Let's give you a couple of moments again, just on those last five questions in case you need them, just to chat through with anyone you're playing with. Okay, and so that round is complete. And so now we come to our final round of the evening. We are here already, ladies and gentlemen. So round six is our picture round. Now, what you're going to be doing in this is naming the city. So you will be naming the city. You will see 15 famous landmarks. And what you need to do is name the city that you would find those landmarks in. If you want to know down the name of the landmark for feelings of satisfaction and completion, you can, but you won't get a point for that, just the name of the city. Now, anyone who has kept their joker until this very final round. It is now your opportunity to strategically place it on the table. Okay, so I will give you about three minutes uh, for the first eight pictures which will appear and then we will move to the final seven. Okay, so I will I will just show it for the three minutes and then it will be gone. Okay, so take the time to note down any clues or anything uh, to give you some more thinking time. But let's go with your first eight pictures.
Okay, 30 seconds just for those first eight. Just another 30 seconds. Hope you're enjoying the music. Um, and then we will go to our final seven. And I might even turn the music back up for the final seven just to bring things to a close. Okay, moving on to our final seven pictures for the night. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that brings us to the end of our pub quiz for tonight. Thank you all very much for your attention this evening. I have had a fab time here with you. Um, I hope you've had a good time playing. Please tot up your scores. Um, as I said, the uh, quizzing bragging rights are what we're playing for. And if you top things up and then just wait a few moments, I will show you what each score allows you to declare yourself. Okay, so let's have a look. Quizzing bragging rights. If you manage to score 90 and above, you are a hashtag quizzing titan. 75 to 89, hashtag quizzing boss. Hashtag quizzing buff for 60 to 74. 45 to 59 is a quizzing imp. 30 to 44 is a quizzing dabbler. And 0 to 29 is a quizzing noodle. I've just realized that I have been giving you that without giving you the answers for the final half. So this is what we are playing for. So let's go back to the answers for the final two, uh, final three rounds. Okay, so round four, which was your potluck round. Okay, question one. Bailando por un sueño is strictly come dancing. Strictly come dancing. 
That is what it is known as in Argentina. Question number two. Which superhero had his own Lego movie? That was Batman. The superhero with his own Lego movie was Batman. Question number three. Which company's tagline is the ultimate driving machine? That is BMW. BMW. Question number four. What is the collective noun for a group of crows? That's a murder. A murder of crows. Question number five. What was Britney Spears' first UK number one? That was Baby One More Time. Baby One More Time. Question number six. Where does Paddington Bear come from? He comes from Peru, or specifically darkest Peru. Question number seven. What was the name of the model village in South Birmingham? That's Bourneville. Bourneville. Bourneville Chocolate. That was the name of the village. Question number eight. What does the Latin phrase kawe cane mean? Beware of the dog. Beware of the dog. Just as important as seizing the day. Question number nine. Who is Barbara Millicent Roberts? She is Barbie. She is Barbie. Question number 10. How many points is the letter X worth in Scrabble? Eight points. Eight points. Number 11. What does an arctophile collect? Teddy bears. An arctophile collects teddy bears. Question number 12. Which version of Windows uh, introduced the start button? That was Windows 95. Windows 95. Way back when. Question 13, when chatting online, what does the acronym IRL stand for? That was in real life. In real life. Question number 14, how many standard bottles of champagne fit into a Jeroboam? Four. Four bottles in a Jeroboam. Question number 15, which pop group's members were called T-Boz, Chili and Left Eye? TLC. It was the initials of their name. Okay, they were the answers to round four. Moving to round five. Question number one, who wrote A Tale of Two Cities? Charles Dickens. Question number two, in which museum is the Mona Lisa? The Louvre. It's in the Louvre in Paris. Question number three, which novel do Fagin, Mr. Bumble and Nancy appear? That's Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist. Question number four. Der Schrei der Natur in English is called the scream. The scream. Question number five. In Bridget Jones, her boss and love interest was called Daniel Cleaver. Daniel Cleaver. Number six. In the Island of the Pussycat, they wrap their honey and plenty of money in a five pound note wrapped up in a five pound note. Question number seven. How old was Adrian Mole in his first book? He was 13 and three quarters. 13 and three quarters. The two gentlemen in the Shakespeare play were in Verona. Verona. Uh, Mr. Strong in the Mr. Men books is red. He is red. The artwork that was shredded after being sold at Sotheby's was done by Banksy. It was by Banksy. Number 11 in Alice in Wonderland, it was the Queen of Hearts who was angered uh, by the playing cards for painting her roses red. Number 12, the second novel, The Autograph Man, was by Zadie Smith, who wrote White Teeth. That was her second novel. Number 13, the name of the merchant in The Merchant of Venice, Antonio. Shylock was the moneylender and Antonio was the merchant. Number 14, the 1995 film Clueless was based on Emma by Jane Austen, loosely based on Jane Austen's novel Emma. And finally, uh, which ear did Van Gogh cut off? His left ear. 50-50 for that one. So hopefully a little bit of a cheeky point at the end there. And now finally, the pictures. Where were all of these landmarks? Number one was in Sydney. That was the Harbour Bridge, of course. Number two was the Colosseum in Rome. Number three was the White House in Washington, D.C. 
Number four was the Golden Temple in Amritsar. Number five was Red Square in Moscow. Number six, Los Angeles, where the Hollywood sign is. Number seven, of course, it was Paris and the Eiffel Tower. Number eight, it had to appear somewhere. That was Birmingham and that was the, the Bullring shopping centre that was in that picture. Number nine, Statue of Liberty in New York City, of course. Number 10, Edinburgh, and that was Edinburgh Castle. Number 11, that was Oxford. So that was the Radcliffe Camera in Oxford. Number 12, that was Seattle. So you were seeing the Space Needle there, famous in Seattle. Number 13, that was Rio de Janeiro and Christ the Redeemer. Number 14, Newcastle, Newcastle upon Tyne and the Tyne Bridges there. And finally, your final answer for this evening was, of course, Pisa and the Leaning Tower. So how did you do? Any good tactical joker playing in that final round? What are you looking at score-wise, thinking about those bragging rights that I just showed? We can pop back to them now. Let's have a look. Now you have all of your answers. What did you score? Are you a titan, boss, buff, imp, dabbler or noodle? How did you go? I would love to hear how you've gone. So those of you who know me, please let me know how you went, how you found the quiz. Those of you that saw this on social media, please do let me know with your hashtag what your score was, what type of quizzer you are. That's the quiz complete on Twitter. I am Ali underscore Bon and I am also Ali underscore Bon on Instagram. I would love to hear how you have done. So all that's left for me to say is goodbye, farewell. Thank you very much. Excellent quizzing by you all, I'm sure. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know or let me know via one of the avenues and I will certainly run this again for you next week. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy. Enjoy uh, the rest of the week and maybe see you soon. Yours in Quizness, Ali B from the Pub Quizzle headquarters. Good night.